Ja. Do it. Start up, Mazo. Oh. oh. Got a floaty scoop. Copy. Is that gonna bother you? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, th I think we know the answer to Is that. It, <laughs> going to bother you enough to recover? No. no. Okay. No. No. I guess might as well turn them both on, huh? We can give everybody everything. Should we not be running it then until our Atlanta's in the water? Uh, it doesn't really hurt anything. Okay. So you're not going to do it? You're going to do it? No, it's on. Oh, you don't have your pingers going. Oh, well, we can do the pingers too. Okay, that's Atlanta clear of the uh, Nautilus. Copy that, going down. Bag waving around. This is an audio slate, audio slate for dive hotel 1963, UTC time 201600 mark. Go ahead, Bridge. Been meaning to ask who Mark is. Good to hold position? We're good to hold position. Receiver sound speed. Looks like we caught a pteropod in our net. What camera is that on, on next to the bigger gauge screen that looks really zoomed out? Is that bubble? No. Is that Cyclops? That's the Cyclops. Okay. Is it? 
Is it? Yeah, I don't know. It's, zo <laughs> it's zoomed. It's zoomed so far back. It is. Yeah. It's uh, a mystery to most of us. Okay. Dan knows how to operate it. It's. I have a page here. I don't <coughs> think you can manually change the zoom. Yeah, you can. You can. Okay. Yes. Well, maybe we should zoom in a little bit. <laughs> and I aspire one day to perhaps know how to do that. <laughs> right, it's kind of it's kind of your whole thing, Dave. <laughs> Actually, not. Four or five um, meters. I'm responsible for the ones in front of me here. I know, but um, to zoom it, anything yeah. that can be zoomed should be. Yeah, probably. But the panel for it is in front of Bob. It's not. It's on the internet. It's on the interwebs. No, that that little button box in front of you there to the right. Oh, this thing. Is. That controls on deck. Uh, that's all. Stop on fifty. Oh, Are you ready for you. control? Wait. Copy that. Five zero, taking control from here. We're gonna be. Copy that. Have control. Can I get a zoom? Dive, dive, dive. Heading down. No. Don't start. Don't start with me. Heading down. Yeah. Got it. We're gonna go. The tape for Mike. Okay. So we can still dive. That's awesome. I love that bag. We're getting the midwater dive we wanted. Starting out at 15. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm in front of you, so you ought to zip down okay. for a bit. Uh -oh. Zip a bit. <laughs> That's an awesome net. Wrestling that thing, wrestling to the ground. It's okay. Not fast enough. <laughs> All right, eight to twelve. Good morning. How's everybody feeling? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, hey. hey, hey. Feel good. Good morning. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. And a very good morning um, 
from the Central Pacific to our viewers online. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. We are currently descending to explore the deep northern flank and summit of Seamount 9. Our expected dive duration is about 22 hours, um, if, um, if I'm correct. Yep. Um, all right, 22 hours with a max depth of 3,100 meters. So please send in your questions and stay tuned as we explore Seamount 9 together. Um, why don't we go ahead and start um, on our introductions for our viewers tuning in uh, with a follow-up question. Okay. Think really hard about this question. Okay. Okay. I'm expecting to see some great things on Sea Mount 9. Uh, if you could be any fish, any fish mm -hmm. in your life, mm -hmm. um, what fish would that be? And maybe a brief explanation. Okay. And we're excluding marine mammals. Anything. 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 To your heart's content. Okay. You know? All right. All right. So, hey, I'm Adam Sewell. I'm a uh, watch lead for 8 to 12. I'm a uh, professor at University of Rhode Island. My Research is in submarine volcanoes. Um, let's see. If I were to be a fish, which, again, I'm not even sure I'd want to be, <laughs> but <laughs> just if I clear. were, I don't know. I, f I feel an affinity to, to people. So I want to be a, a koi in a koi pond at a Four Seasons. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, I did not expect that. Uh, four seasons on a tropical island. Okay. Um, wow, interesting. <laughs> I missed the question, and now <laughs> I don't know if I want to know. Is it, you could be any fish. In you the, could be any fish. Yeah. What fish would you be? Yeah. What do you want to be? I want to be a koi in a koi pond. You really are a geologist, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the fish in the sea. <laughs> well, that one, they live a long time. They okay. don't have to worry about predators. True. They, it looks really fun when you feed them and they all swarm up and w wriggle against each other. <laughs> uh, they're pretty. And okay. And that's it. That's it. Thanks, I think. Wow. Okay. Okay. Influencer Jules? Um, hi. I'm looking for this specific fish and I can't find it, but I will describe it to you. But maybe who you are. Um, yeah, more than, <laughs> um, less importantly, I'm Jules, uh, I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology, um, I am a scientist on the 8 to 12 watch. Also check out her, Jules's uh, Instagram takeover yes, of yeah, Nautilus right. Live Instagram yep. account. I'm taking over the Nautilus Live Instagram today, so check that out, we're gonna have some fun. Smash that subscribe button. Yeah. <laughs> Not follow Hit that button. like button, um, follow and subscribe. So the fish that I'm thinking of, um, they like, like keep their little like lawn, like nice and manicured, like oh. to impress the lady fishes. And I just think that's really nice. Like they like trim, they like they like keep it neat to like impress them. And I don't know. I just like that that these fish have little lawns. Gardening fish. Yeah, they're like gardeners. Cool. That's very cute. Okay, well, hi everyone. My name is Paula Santiago. I am the Swash data logger and this expedition science intern. I am a uh, marine biologist who work on coral restoration in Puerto Rico. And about fish, I, I still don't have one, Annie. Are you gonna, don't tell me you're gonna take a rain check. <laughs> okay, no, okay. She's looking yeah. at the fish guide as we <laughs> see. I'm seeing Samantha's guide. That's it. I'm looking for fishes. No okay. one's gonna hold you to this answer. It can change at a future time, so you can just pick one. But okay, awesome, then. I guess the first one that comes to mind is the whale shark. No. But it's just because I want to see it. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. Maybe I can see myself in oh, a mirror. A whale, a whale shark, shark in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I will be very happy. So whale shark? Yes. Whale okay. Shark. Okay. Let's go. All right. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Annie Halleck. I am this watch's SCF 
a science communication fellow. I'm from Pang Pang American Samoa. Uh, this is my first year sailing on the Nautilus. Um, so my fish, there's one back home, but really, I can't, I can't remember the name, so I'll go for my second choice. Um, the blue Chromis veritas, it's a small, um, very vibrant, they, they go in school right here, if you guys can see. Reef fish. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So they, when you, um, when you go swimming or snorkeling, they're very, they're so beautiful just to observe. Um, and also, um, I'm trying to avoid getting fished, mm -hmm. so I, I would choose blue chromis veritas. It's really smart. They're very gentle and just doing their own thing. Okay, let's go. Front row. Is it this one? Maybe start with Dave. Don't everybody oh, jump in Amazon. all at once. <laughs> Uh, Dave Robertson, uh, lead video engineer, and uh, sitting in the video chair, zooming in on things for the eight to twelve watch. Uh, I uh, this is uh, these role playing things are weird because I don't want to be a fish. I mean, <laughs> I like being what I am. But let's see. Uh, I, I really like the koi answer. Like at yeah. at the uh, okay. at the resort at the buffet all day. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah, join me. And then the, <laughs> the, uh, the reef fish, I dig reef fish. I love going snorkeling and following reef fish around and that kind of stuff. But those have already been taken. So uh, I guess I want to be something big and bad, like a shark. Oh, like yeah. a Great white? Like a big old great white shark Ooh. running around. Top of the food chain, baby. Wow. They're not the top, though. They get beat well, up by <laughs> killer whales. So. Is that right? OK. <laughs> Uh, how you doing? Uh, I'm Mike Burns. I am the Atalanta pilot uh, for today, or on the shift. Um, from Honolulu, Hawaii, also Glassboro, New Jersey. <laughs> Woo <-hoo! laughs> New Jersey! It's a, it's a Best story. state! Very long story. <laughs> uh, I guess if I had to pick what fish I'd be, I'd be a uh, tiger shark. Oh. Big fat oh. happy tiger shark. Oh wow. <laughs> They just, <laughs> they just eat everything. They eat everything. It's great. Yeah. And when they when they are done eating all the plastics and uh, metal bits and other things, then they just invert their stomach and shake it all out and keep no, going. No, really? Oh yeah. What? Uh, yeah. What? You didn't know that? Uh -uh. No, I did oh, yeah, not know so, that. I mean, they can't digest like turtle shells and other hard bits like uh, albatross beaks and stuff. So they just uh, when their stomach gets full of that stuff or you know the other objects out there such as license plates and uh toilet seats and whatever else they can get their mouth on they <laughs> they invert their stomach out their mouth shake out their stomach and then suck it back in oh that, they oh are probably gosh. so sore after they yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow that's fascinating thank you there we go <laughs> wait a second though wait a second how do they get albatrosses how? They, they land they on the turn. water? They're sitting on the I water so, and then they yeah. come up and they eat them. They nom them, yeah. Okay, but so usually the from the mouth all the way to the other end is like a tube. So how do they invert hey, it? Um, they must stretch their intestine out behind it to do it. That sounds like a hard <laughs> life. <laughs> all right, anyway. It's not a hard life. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robert oh. Waters in the hurt seat. I'm OET's... Uh, Facilities manager and ROV engineer, and uh, I guess maybe a mandarin fish. Huh? Why? Oh, yeah. mandarin. I never heard of that. What uh, is they're it? They're cuckoo for cocoa pods. <laughs> <laughs> a mandarin. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, look that up. Mandarin. Oh, very fish. colorful. Wow. Where do you find those? Wow, it's beautiful. You find those oh, in nice. Palau. Actually, we're gonna yeah. see those next year. Sweet. Oh, those are beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Turquoise, blue, orange stripes. Yeah, you get them in greens and oranges beautiful. and blues. Are they poisonous? Because they, of their coloring looks they like don't, they I've yeah. never tried one. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, colorful things are usually Yeah. They they're very slow moving fish. Oh, all right, Samantha. Hello, Samantha Wishnack, uh, navigator on the H-12, also the operations coordinator for Ocean Exploration Trust. 
which is the nonprofit that operates Nautilus. Uh, I'm going to have to choose the barrel eye fish, which oh. is a deep sea fish uh, that has a see through head on top Whoa. of the head oh, so yeah. that it can rotate its little Ooh. tubular eyes oh, up snap. and see prey. Um, and they also will eat food that siphonophores have caught. So they'll come in under the siphonophore, rotate their eyes up to see what it's eating, um, grab something off the siphonophore's tentacles that has been caught, and then they can also rotate their eyes back down to see ahead of them. I barely can imagine what that would look like. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like that Pretty one. cool. They're one of the first deep sea fish that I learned about when I was a kid and blew my mind. And they're pretty rare to see. But maybe we'll see one today. Maybe we'll see maybe. one. Thank you so much, team. Um, for everybody uh, tuning in online, please send in your questions. Our team would be happy to answer them for you. I yeah. got a question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's our estimated time on bottom? Oh. Stand by. We're, we're not, we're not going to get it yet. We're not getting it yet. <laughs> Don't we have an average descent nope. speed? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> It'll be a while, folks. It'll be a while. <laughs> yeah, at least two hours. A while. Oh. So we'll be handing off to the other watch right, right as we get to right. Just setting it up for them. Yeah, so um, the sharks, they have a trick called gastric eversion. So it's like if a shark wants or needs to eject its belly contents, it just flips its stomach out of its mouth and everything goes flying. A little like dumping out of your out your pockets to empty them. Mm. Oh, snap. They do it as a uh, defense mechanism too when they're oh. smaller. So oh, okay. The... Uh, the smell of, of uh, gastrointestinal juice from sharks is uh, like none other. <laughs> wow. Ooh, what does it smell like? Uh, it's an oily substance, okay. so it sticks to whatever Ooh, it attaches cool. to. And uh, I would put it on the equivalent of like a dump that's in a hot, humid area after no. a fresh rain. It's <laughs> very <laughs> specific <laughs> smell profile. It's about the closest that I can get it to. Okay. So, yeah. We're Is that one of those that things that smell incredibly that descriptive smell? as well? Yeah. It's it's a smell that you never that you hope would smell good, but it definitely is not a good smell. <laughs> Do you hope that that smells good? You would you would hope so if it gets on you. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be living it with it for a while. Oh, oh, let's go chat. So our um, max death dive. We have chat saying let's go now. Um, Thirty one hundred meters. Um, oh, and then shout out to Friday Harbor. Harbor? Um, we have a question. So what's it like been having out or been out for a few weeks at sea? Is there, fre us. Is there fresh <laughs> fruit still <laughs> starting to get cramped? <laughs> There's still the fresh students, yeah. fruit and vegetables. <laughs> cabbage. And cabbage. Um, I've been eating a lot of cabbage. And, yeah, I think, I think that people... You know, it is a little close quarters, but people are also finding their spots where they can be a little bit alone. And, right. Uh, I think we're we're kind of in a rhythm. I have a specific corner that I like hanging out in. Mm -hmm. Where you go? Yeah. Where? Which corner? <laughs> Don't, Don't tell. Don't <laughs> yeah. Top secret. Need to know basis. <laughs> yeah, the sunsets and the sunrise have been beautiful. Really beautiful. Oh, we and got then, a little bit rained on last night. Yeah, th <coughs> that's oh, right. That was nice. It was pleasant. Oh, and then um, chat is wondering. Um, I saw that Atalanta had a kind of backpack on. What's it for? Oh yeah, that's for. Crush is that cups. the the crush cups? Yes. <laughs> um, we should explain what happened. So. Styrofoam uh, is mostly air, and when you take it down to high pressure, it squeezes down and, and all the air squeezes out, and because of its material properties, it doesn't bounce back to its original shape. 
So it's been a long tradition in ocean science. You kind of draw a picture on a styrofoam cup and it comes back like a shrunken, like a shrinky dink. Yeah, like a shrinky dink. And it's kind of like a little memento. And, and these folks here do it exceptionally well. There's multiple redundancies to ensure that the cups stay where we put them. Right. Um, and so it's kind of kind of cool. And then um, you get to decorate the cups too. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to. Is, is it only a one-time thing or? You well, can re if you say go down to a thousand meters, okay. the cup will shrink only so much. And if you put it back in and went down to 3,000 meters, it would shrink a little bit more, but there is a limit. And, oh, okay. okay. Um, it, it doesn't have to do only with depth, but with like the quality <laughs> of your styrofoam. The cheaper the styrofoam, the more it shrinks. Right, right. Thank you. ETA to the bottom. Um, Don't stand ask by, Chad. <laughs> yeah. Stand by. So what is the quality We're not of there our yet. styrofoams? 100 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a time. Uh, our styrofoam looks pretty low quality, which is good. That means awesome. it'll shrink more. You want me to give a little bit more beans once we get to like 750 or? Uh, no, I'm I'm not going as fast as you. Okay. I'm, I'm full beans. Roger. So there's another fish that I really like back home. It's called the box fish. And oh. it looks like a pyramid fish, and it's really oh. small. Mm -hmm. And it just looks spaced out all the time. <laughs> like it's really close to the divers. Oh, yeah. I'll check that out. Whoa. Oh, oh, is this the so one that cute. was following your friend? <laughs> yes, yeah, so on one occasion, <laughs> there, uh, we were working right They're home. So cute. And they have like these little fins compared to the rest of the body. And they just saw like the the biggest box fish we've seen so far on the island, and mm -hmm. this box fish just looked straight at them and just started swimming really <laughs> fast <laughs> towards them, and then it just started attacking so the uh, the sticks that we used to to measure corals, the rulers, and then it just started like he knew that wasn't enough, so we just started attacking the the wetsuit and then the skin. Wow! Did. Uh, is all your work on the south side of the island? Yeah, actually, yes, yeah. on the south side of Culebra, mainly to avoid the the swells that come from the northerly winds. Right. So and we don't it, get. And also, the north side of the island kind of drops off pretty quick, right? Like to Ooh. on the subduction zone side. But Adelanto <coughs> can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we just missed it. Never mind. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> So clownfish like Nemo there, he's, those are very aggressive. If you get the territorial and you get near them, they'll come and snap at you. <laughs> oh. Are your guys' boxfish, are they poisonous like the ones over in Hawaii? Um, they have neurotoxins, but we can just pick them up because it doesn't affect humans. Okay. It's just for other fish. Yeah, Yeah, that's the same in American Samoa. Yeah, same in Hawaii. But their coloration back home is like a, like a brownish uh, white instead right. of the jello. Right. We have nudibranchs too. That I do not touch. Mm, yeah, for sure. I, I love nudibranchs. Yeah. yeah. That's so pretty. <laughs> so cool. I don't know. It oh, and then we have a question. Why was this dive targeted? Yeah, so that's a great question. So this dive is unique amongst the ones we've been doing. We've been diving pretty much on the sides of the flat-topped seamounts or guillos. The, they're the largest seamounts in the area. This one is a uh, volcanic ridge that never reached the sea surface. So it, if yeah. you, if we get a chance to show high pack, you can see it's kind of elongate and it's got a, a narrow ridge crest. Um, but it's also at a depth that we haven't really been targeting. So right. we want to see, uh, and a lot of times the, the ecosystems we see are, are uh, kind of 
depth dependent. And so we want to see what's down at this depth, especially in an area which we think is going to get kind of high current flow because we're going to be right at the peak of it. So we're going up the, um, from north to south pretty much, going up the north side of this ridge. is looks, I think it extends kind of like, you know, eight or nine kilometers. So we're just going to see a small portion of it. Okay. And then we also have our viewers um, who tuned into our watch when we um, when we got the whale mm -hmm. fossils. Um, so they're wondering how did that go? How did the they're, observation? They're really in. Oh, the oh the the two bones that we got. And there was also something else that what? they found, which was a, a fresher uh, whale fall with with Osidex worms. So that. So we found some very old fossil beaked whale beaks, and those were fantastic. They made it all the way back on the front porch, and uh, and they look incredible. And then later on, on the next watch, they found a uh, unidentified uh, marine organism, but a skull fragment, and wow. it had the kinds of worms on it that are well known from uh, whale falls in you know, off of California. And as far as we know, this is unconfirmed, but uh, this would be the kind of furthest west the Osidex worms have been observed. So a nice range extension. That's really exciting. Yeah. That's cool. cool. That's yeah. really cool. But it, I mean, it, that's a hard one to know the range of because you don't just find them normally. You have to find the skeleton. Um, so it could be they're all over the places, just wherever you find the, the whale falls. Awesome, thank you. And then our Friday Harbor students were wondering about um, the geologic age of this area that we're exploring. Yeah, that's a great question. There's a little bit of uncertainty. Most of the volcanoes in this long chain that's called the Line Islands are 80 million years old, but there are some volcanoes that have been dated at 30 million years old. So there might be a mix of different hotspot tracks kind of merged together here. Um, but those are the two kind of age ranges that have been found. So kind of 80 and 30 million years ago. That's really old. So, uh, you know, kind of cool to see that part of Earth history, uh, you know, here and here in the modern ocean. Awesome, thank you so much. Are we expecting, what are we expecting to see at 3,100 meters? Bear live yeah. fish? No. Did I say that r right? Bear live? Bear yeah. Barrel Ooh, eye. Barrel eye. Barrel eye. I was yeah. saying bear lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like bear two barrels. Barrels, rise. yes, yes, okay. Yeah, so uh, we don't know. We haven't had any dives at this depth, uh, Ooh, so it, it'll be exciting. exciting. Yeah, so. Um, it, there's a good chance that whatever we see here will be something new to us on this this particular expedition and maybe new to science. Thank you. It'll be especially fun for the next two watches. <laughs> right. Yeah. We have to wait our turn. Yeah. Does this Later water on. look different than the other water? Yeah. <laughs> it's looking a little bluer. <laughs> maybe. It looks the same. Yes, the whalebone did survive. It we, we received it and we got it. Okay. And then our chat would also like to hear from our team, what do we like to do when we have free time to keep ourselves entertained? A lot of reading, some napping. We've done quite a few puzzles. Right. Uh, Is there a, a multiple room? puzzles or just one? Oh, there's a lot. Oh, okay, okay. I was wondering. There's a, a gym, so people do exercise. Sometimes um, people do push-ups. Yeah, do push-ups. Uh, we talk to each <laughs> other and learn <laughs> about each other, which has yeah. been, you know, totally yeah. fascinating to yeah. learn people's stories. Um, we probably do some of our shoreside work, you know, if we have it. Um, there's sure. some uh, crafting happening. That's true. Crochet. Yeah. Uh, there's I've even a knot class. class. Yeah. Knot class. Knots. Knots. Yeah. 
And but we've seen you sketching a bit, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to sketch and draw, and I also like to um, go up to the monkey deck, um, anywhere where there's a good view of the sunset. Mm. It's yeah. probably also, when, when we get off watch, it doesn't mean that we're necessarily done with our work. Right, you know, especially that's true. When we bring back these samples, we, we've got to process the samples. Samantha, when we're doing mapping, when we're not diving, is down there uh, uh, processing multi-beam data and directing the ship. Mm -hmm. um, Mike seems to j run around a lot out there on deck. Not sure <laughs> what he's doing. <laughs> he goes in a hole, he comes out another hole, you know. <laughs> Don't underestimate the powers of the, the deck chief. And, it, and the <laughs> ROV is constantly uh, receiving kind of maintenance and, and uh, you know, work done on it. So it's, it's busy, busy out here. Adam's always cutting open rocks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he lets us help. Yeah, that's been a cool that experience. That was really cool. That was a cool experience. Looking for whale sharks. Looking for whale sharks. I haven't sharks. seen one yet. What will we have? How many days left? Oh, um, uh, seven. We have one week left. Seven days, jeez. Uh, three more days of, um, of dives. Ooh, okay. Getting close. So our chances are not great, but we have a chance still to see the whale shark. We have seen I a lot really of white like tips. I will mm -hmm. have to while we're on station, though. When we're in transit, it's not going to happen. So. Aww. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry well. for the realism. It's <laughs> <So laughs> true. Lower than we thought. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but maybe we'll see whales or dolphins in our transit. That would be that very do exciting. It, hopeful. Sorry, Samantha, what did you say? Oh, unlikely but hopeful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. What type of dolphins do you see when, yeah, <laughs> around the Nautilus? Uh, depends on where we are. When we're closer into the islands, we'll see spinner dolphins, a lot of spinner dolphins. Um, Ooh. False also. killer whales we False saw last whales. time. Yeah. yeah, a huge pod. Wow. That sounds impressive. Yeah. Oh, we did see some fish the other night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was it called, the name? I thought that they were Kahala, but they, uh, yeah, I mean, not getting a close enough look. Or they're also called Amberjack. Oh. Nice. They were really big. Mm -hmm. Do people fish them? Uh, you can fish them, yeah. But I, without getting a better look from the surface and stuff uh, at them could uh, be a hundred percent positive. That sounds like all of our ideas on the dive, like <laughs> possible plexarid, <laughs> possible. <laughs> could just overboarded Atalanta and have them swim around. What does Moog stand for? What are you saying? What? Moog. Moog? Moog. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the motor controllers. Where are you uh, seeing it? Oh. Oh, On uh, the screen to your left. Oh. So that's the uh, fiber optic multiplexer. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Seen behind the curtain. Yeah. No, <laughs> I I minimize those. Oh. Yeah. Let's see. Wouldn't dare dream of closing those. Is that a? Uh... Nope. Okay. Chat SPL stands for Science Party Line. Science Party Line. Is 
had an accurate uh, time to bottom. Ooh, yeah, ETA. pretty good. Okay, so ETA is about 60, 70 minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, well. Well, maybe not. You gotta catch it when <laughs> I'm not doing things. <laughs> 60 to 70 minutes, we'll say that. So within, yeah, basically at the watch change, we'll be handed over, <laughs> so. Awesome. Right, <laughs> we're the shuttle drivers. Oh, what is the first, this is a good question, what is the first shoreside food you're going to have? I really want sushi. Oh, sushi. That sounds good. I'm down for that. Sushi does yes. sound good. We can all go get yeah. a juicy. I don't Talking. know what it is for me, but some people it's going to be flaming Hot Cheetos, I believe. What? <laughs> some people are really into those. Yeah. That's interesting. Had I some had discussions. We went, we, uh, in our last port stop, there was a little farmer's market that we stopped at um, on the way to the beach and uh, got elote, like the roasted corn on the Ooh. cob. Oh, yum. And there was uh, one option, did have flaming Cheetos, which was <laughs> delightful. Oh, you got the flaming Cheetos? No, I got um, a different one, but I've had had in the past. I got one with uh, furikake and uh, hurricane popcorn on it. Oh. That sounds very good. Yeah. Looking forward to boba tea. Boba. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm going to be eating matcha a lot frap. of different a foods. A matcha frap. I I'm going to write all of this. This, this sounds great. Manapua. Oh, a manapua. What's that? Mm. What is manapua that? Manapua would be like good. a steam bun with <gasps> barbecue pork inside. Yeah, with pork inside. Oh. It's really good. These manapua? conversations are really exciting, but also <laughs> like a little bit upsetting. <laughs> a little distressing. Oh, I just want cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just a big cabbage. bowl just of store cabbage. cabbage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a Big Mac and fries. Oh, yeah. God, you yeah. feel so bad after that. <laughs> Korean barbecue? I'll be going to Jen's. Uh, Korean barbecue sounds good. Mm -hmm. I want Manapua. It's really good. It's really good. I'm like... A Must little bit try. like stressed about what I'm gonna eat first because there's so many <laughs> there's different so many foods choices. that I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I want them all. But you know what? There's also the second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth things you eat. That's Those are very all good true. Too. Yeah. What's the best thing you've tried in Hawaii for breakfast? Oh. Ooh. Musubi. 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 <laughs> that's such a, that's such a yeah. Portuguese musubi. sausage. Chicken katsu musubi. Oh, oh sausage. chicken katsu. Oh, yeah. Anything oh, yeah. from Maona musubi, <gasps> which is a really good spot in downtown. <laughs> Wait, what how do I write this? Because I'm not. <laughs> uh, Samantha, repeat the that right name. <laughs> Maona. M-A-O-N-A. -A. Oh. Musubi is Don't M -U -U musubi. There's nothing wrong with the recipe, but Maona does it does like the sandwich style. I'm happy with a classic Instead spam. Like oh, classic God. spam. Oh. Classic no. spam. Come on, Absolutely. folks. Ooh. There's also we can, do, we can do better. Oh, oh spam and man. Egg. Let me look up the shop. Spam and egg musubi. Oh, oh can man. we get some musubi shipped to the uh, mail buoy? Guys, <laughs> 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 you get your postcards written. Um, there's also ube pancakes. Ube What's that? <laughs> ube pancakes. Yes. Well, I know I know the pancake part. Ube. <laughs> Ube. Oh my gosh, they're hiring. Should I <laughs> should I quit my job and start working here? Yes. Yeah, so it's like um purple yam. Yes. You know? But then the sauce they it's really Taste, um, those are very difficult to repair. It's like looking at under the hood of an old car versus a new car and you're yeah. like, I can't I don't even know what anything is in here anymore. Mm. Yeah, to do like ball grid array repair, you have to have a special scope that can look underneath the part that's, you know, it's a couple of tenths of a millimeter off the board. Wow. And you're like looking through a little forest of solder balls. Huh. We don't have a machine like that out here. So it's, uh, 
I mean, we're all happy with things getting smaller, but yeah. that means that they're getting they're just tougher less, to repair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm glad that there's there is you know some movement towards making things easier to repair. I know like John Deere tractors are kind of notorious for being. Oh yeah. You know, farmers are having to have the John Deere rep come out. And right, if you try and repair it yourself, it kind yeah. of bricks the whole thing. Yeah. They're designed for you not to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I gonna get in trouble for saying a brand name? No, not a sponsor. <laughs> not a sponsor. <laughs> the opposite. Re really unlikely to be one in the future yeah. as well. <laughs> John Deere brings you the deep sea. <laughs> Speaking of fixing things at sea, we do have a couple of ways to do that, including a 3D printer. Yeah, we just got a 3D printer, and that's very handy for making something that, you know, a repair part or a bracket. What have you guys uh, made on this cruise? Uh, storage boxes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yes. Lots of storage boxes, yeah. Get your optode cover. Optode cover, mm -hmm. yeah. What does that do? Uh, so the optode is supposed to stay uh, moist and protected from the sun when it's on deck. So we had we had been using a plastic bag and a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> so this was an upgrade? Yeah. And, and what's an optode for the folks this at home? It's our oxygen sensor. Mm -hmm. It uses a, a uh, membrane that, uh, I guess it changes its reflective properties or something. It changes color. And then it, it uses a light that shines against that and it looks at the reflected light measures the amount of color I'm not I'm not a uh, optode scientist but yeah it's not something along that line speaking of upgrades our, our Friday Harbor students are wondering if there was any upgrade to Herc that could be added oh yeah could have any two brand new manipulators would be a nice upgrade mm. Oh, if we were to go shopping and get, well, we want a, an, Blue inertial, sky. an inertial navigation system. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's so that do? That yes. would give us much better navigation and uh, it, it would kind of fix this cloud of USBL fixes. Yeah. And give us like sub centimeter like positioning accuracy when we go mm. into auto. If we do our auto XYs. You do like going into autopilot. Well, so, <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal. Because, like, say you're on a f wall, and they say, I want that coral. Yeah. And hard. right now, we, you know, you need to live fly it to really be, like, zoomed in on a coral. Yeah. Our, our auto XY has too much drift. So. Or if you want to shoot a laser at a particular little exactly. square or something. You know? Yeah. We had an INS system, like uh, the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else? What? What? Uh, are there any, like, tools or? Yeah, new manipulators. Mm -hmm. We could definitely re use a replacement for uh, the Magnum. Yeah. <laughs> what about on the science side? What's like the blue sky vision for a science tool or a science instrument on an ROV that maybe doesn't exist yet? Uh, b b b b I mean, there's, depending on where you are, there's a bunch of cool sensors, you know, chemical sensors that you'd want. Um, electrochemical sensors for sulfides and uh, spectroscopy sensors for methane and, and carbon dioxide. Um, Tools for in situ filtration, pumping and filtration, which we will likely have on Hercules in the coming, or in this year at some point. Yeah, we've had um, that kind of system in the past. At least one 
Yeah, that's a, it's... Because, uh, are you talking like the pelagic pumps? Well, so pelagic pump with uh, some sort of manifold to, to yeah. uh, direct it to various filters and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, we had a prototype out during the subsea cruise a couple years ago, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else? Just, you know, bigger boxes for bigger rocks. That's always a good one. <laughs> <laughs> what doesn't exist yet, Adam, that would be like, that uh, would advance the way that we could a lot of sample? So, in situ uh, DNA analysis and, you know, kind of what Pablo and Impossible Sensing, you know, in situ chemical analysis would be nice to have a uh, manageable drill for, you know, so when we try and get these, basically any rock becomes available to sample, even a, a kind of sheer wall. Uh, we'll see, what else would we like to have? Be nice to have a little kind of scout team of small AUVs that goes around the vehicle that uh, kind of helps you decide where to go. Be cool to have a, a optical tether. So, in times when you don't want to be connected to the ship, uh, samplers that retain pressure, uh, so you can bring samples up, you know, fully live and viable. Uh, uh, like a nice espresso machine. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to get some traction on the espresso machine and it just didn't go anywhere. Have you been up to the the forward lounge? We have an espresso machine. How about a multi -core Of course they device? do. Uh -huh. The forward lounge. You can go up there. Uh, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, hey, we don't let it just anyone. <laughs> yeah, invitation's open. Come get an espresso. Oh, wow. What about a multi-coring device for science? Yeah. Uh, oh, S Steve Oskovich from Shore is asking for quiver racks. Quiver racks. What's that? Which I believe is just kind of racks for, for push cores. Yeah, but, I mean, some of these things are like... They're not new, yeah. No, I mean, impossible, right? Why? Because there's no place to put it. Where yeah. do you put okay, it? Okay, so first off, bigger porch. <laughs> uh, maybe well, bigger uh, porch means bigger ROV. Deployable uh, mm. undercarriage. Yeah, still bigger ROV. Uh, <laughs> elevator operations. Yeah, that's possible. Let's see what else. Are we dreaming about ROVs? Like, and then is this like an ideal world? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, can yeah, yeah. Anything yeah, you'd the like question. to add okay. to the ROV? I want to add like a <laughs> really small ROV, and when we're on bottom, it's like a Roomba, and it just goes out <laughs> on its own, uh -huh. takes like the sample that you want, and then comes back like with a coil. It just yeah. trims it and it's then like comes back. It's like the original back. Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want a microscope. Oh, that'd be cool. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. We also have chat tuning in um, about the, what about movable measuring lasers instead of the 10 centimeters um, that Herc has, you can have, we can have a more accurate measurement. Mm. You mean instead of? <laughs> instead of having to <laughs> estimate. <laughs> no, that's yeah. yeah. I, a good idea. A laser line scanner, which yeah. has been on Herc before. That'd be cool. Uh. Steve would like a system to inject RNA later uh, on the seafloor so that we could preserve samples in situ. Mm. There's been something in the past called a, what was that called? That like uh, blender of life or something like that where they <laughs> blend it up. It, it was basically a blender on the on the basket where you put like mussels and stuff in and blended them up with RNA later to preserve the RNA. Oh. Well, okay, as long as it's when it's on deck, we could use it for margaritas. <laughs> I don't think he'd want to. Smell a little funky, that. but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what else would I like? Oh, um, better, like, devices for sampling gelatinous things. Yeah, some soft, soft robotics. Yeah. Yeah, not good for my rocks, though. Things that are notorious. <laughs> this would be an addition. So, so along that line, See, it would be better if we had selectable tools, right? Yeah. Oh, if we had oh, a just like a box. whole like toolbox. You just stick the cool. arm in and pull out the one you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, so yeah that'd be you cool. Had, you had your, you know, device for grabbing soft things, and then and then you the big rock claw for. Yes, a crowbar would be not bad. Well, so uh, so drills and crowbars. You have a physical problem there that you need to have force behind it yeah you know like mm -hmm. you can't just come up against something without using force right In maybe if you had like ultrasonic vibrations rather than <laughs> Ooh. sounds cool yeah no i get you all right yeah uh, we did have a, a nasa device out here a couple of years ago. A, a rock big gripper? Rock, yeah, it looked like, like a face hugger. <laughs> yeah, a face hugger from Alien. It had like, it had like 32 gripper things that, and it was flexible. Kind of a mechanical gripper. And what if was, you had some sort of technology where like, like your arm movements were like, like your arm <laughs> was like, like oh, controlled movements on the ROV back. somehow. Like if your arm moves, so it the, moves. There are, in fact, Kraft, the one who makes the our starboard arm there, makes a controller that you put your whole arm in the thing. <gasps> no and it, way. And it has force feedback and moves your arm, but. That's so cool. Uh, it's what? not It's not as cool as you'd think it is. So. Oh. <laughs> So we have force feedback on this manipulator, <laughs> and we never use it. Nobody. Oh, really? Yeah. What is that? Because it doesn't do what you would hope that it would do. Like, ben it doesn't benefit you, really. Oh. Well, this one would benefit you. <laughs> 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 and maybe it would be a whole body thing. Yeah. Like, you could put on a suit full body suit and it's like you were there <laughs> <laughs> like a c4 neck is yeah is if something hits you would you also feel that yeah yeah crush oh. your arm oh. Oh. they're like oh they're stinging cells on that, <laughs> that <laughs> organism <laughs> yeah <laughs> and 3d glasses don't work on a rolling boat like it'll give you seasickness in seconds Oh, that sounds horrible. Oh. No, Annie just got very quiet. Like, oh, don't take me back there. <laughs> no, 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 please. I feel like I just have a continuous headache at this point. No, I'm with you. Oh, it's happening mm -hmm. to me. It's dehydration, y'all. Drink. Okay, I'm working on it. Thanks, okay. Drink a lot of water. Okay. Yep. Stay it's hydrated, fun. folks. Maybe have something to catch fish. I know it will be depending on on the area zone that we're in, but it will be really cool to know what they eat, like dissect them. Yeah. And oh, I seriously don't that. know how we have any like deep sea fish. Well, mm -hmm. some of it is baited traps. Oh. Yeah. Well, okay. But I've <laughs> seen people try and slurp fish before. <laughs> what? No. We've, yeah. we've slurp fish. Yeah. yeah. What? It's tough, wow. Right? Wait, you it's been successful. It right. Well, There's if you get them like the ones that live around the vents and kind of they nuzzle into the, you know, the oh, nice. mussels or whatever's there, and then you can get them if they if they're free swimming and, you know, on the muddy bottom they're pretty tough to get. <laughs> okay, depends. Then. Free swimming, fun loving. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then something self samples too. All right. Hops in. Yeah, I found a an anglerfish in a like mesh cage underneath Jason one time. Yeah, I was just surprised that it was like. Bleh. Yeah, so the okay. accidental samples. We've had a few squid swim in the hurricane, yeah. and then <laughs> you find them on recovery. Yeah, you discover <laughs> where all the little nicks and crannies are yeah. on the ROV yeah. after uh, <laughs> whether or not you want to know that information. Lantern, uh, not lantern fish. Um, yeah, lanternfish, the little pelagic fish also sometimes get in there. 
Yeah, chat is saying, uh, we will not speak of the attempt to slurp the Dumbo. Uh. <laughs> no. Oh, did we, um, Paula, what was the verdict on the little star that we slurped the other day? Oh, it or was, star? I think. I I don't know. Maybe it's a possible between a slime star or a cushion star. Oh, we don't have a I definitive answer. Tentative oh, slime star. Okay. Was that the fuzzy one? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Um, is Mongo still on Herc? What's Mongo? We don't call it that. Okay. <laughs> it's the Magnum. It's from, okay, it's from <laughs> K Chat. We don't call call it that. Yeah. Magnum is still there. Yeah. Is the Adelina camera moving, or is there just a wiggly cable there? There is just a cable moving with the current. Okay. There, more of it was coming into view on the right-hand side of the screen. Was yeah, it has a lot of slack oh, there it in is. it. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's okay? Yep, okay. that's a wire. Well, it's probably not great. It's okay. probably yeah, should in. be secured better, but it has to have slack so it can tilt up and down. Yeah. So we do have a question from about like the fish. Uh, are the fish dissected on board? Um, Before, well, I don't know. Uh, we don't we really have haven't time. collected yeah. any fish. What about previous cruises? Typically, on uh, on expeditions I've been on, yes, most of this the biology collected gets dissected on board, like tube worms and mussels Ooh, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Nice. Hmm. Very smelly. Speaking of smelly, that's also another <laughs> question. <Speaking of. laughs> Chat wants to know what like what does it, what do the organisms um, smell like when we Yeah. There's Paula and Jules. <laughs> what There's definitely a smell. Um the the new things smell different from the old things. Uh, some of the older specimens that I work with at the museum have a very distinctive smell, it's sort of like ocean mixed yeah, with ethanol. Yeah, I think the ones definitely like the whale fossil and the the skeleton that we found smell very differently from. Like from how? Like is it like bony kind of smell? Like I guess so. Okay. I've never had the experience of smelling bones before, so ah, I think that, well, that, yeah. that, that was a first. <laughs> yeah. You haven't lived. I haven't. So I haven't. you've <laughs> smelled some bones, you know? <laughs> yes. I found that urchins smell worse than other things over time. Ah, oh, okay. okay. My experience. And then the rocks smell like rocks. Yeah, no, I mean, they they smell a little oceany, you know? Mm -hmm. They smell a little briny, and, and uh, there's a lot of, you know, very small biological stuff or even biofilm, you know, stuck to them, so. But isn't, uh, isn't there a coral that smells kind of like citrusy? Oh, uh, is what? Steve still, if Steve's still watching, I bet he. Uh, Steve's, Steve's still on. Great. Steve, we're looking. Steve. Uh, we got it. We're taking corals that smell, smell citrusy for 400. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need an answer. There's a um, sea slug, a nudibranch uh, called Melaby leonina in uh, the giant that lives in the giant kelp of um, California, and it smells like watermelon when it's out of the water. What? Wow. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. You'll pull up um, kelp that's like floating on the surface, and if there are some living on it, the whole kelp smells like watermelon. Amazing. Sorry, Whoa. Samantha, can you yeah. repeat that? Melibe, M-E-L-I-B-E. Oh, Leonina. 
Yeah. Oh. oh. Melody, what I want to be is the, the phrase that usually goes with that. <laughs> Melody, what I want to be. <laughs> Actually, they're one of my favorite animals. I don't, I'm surprised I haven't brought it up yet. They ha they're translucent, uh, and they have the, the front portion looks kind of like a Venus flytrap with yeah, a hood you're right. to catch plankton, and then the back part looks like stegosaurus spikes running mm -hmm. down its, uh, its body. They lay eggs in the shape of little ribbons on kelp. Oh. oh. They're really, really beautiful. Nudibranchs. Are we there yet? No. <laughs> Dang it. What do we think we'll have for lunch today? Mm. I guess it's be pretty similar to yesterday. The same. Some chicken, some pork, some veggies. They had fresh Salt. salmon yesterday. I mean, maybe not fresh, but was on you? Uncooked salmon. Yeah. Salmon. Yeah, salmon. Okay. That was nice. Why is it that it's easier to get dehydrated on boats? I don't think it is. No. Maybe I mean, you feel more the effects of dehydration when you're on a boat. And we're constantly cycling between heavily air conditioned spaces to humid mm. heat. Your body is always compensating for all the motion that it's taking in. I think it's just easier to get tired in general and have more stress on your body. Do we have an estimate on how many lives, um, how many dives we have left? How many lives? <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> how many lives do we have? <laughs> I think we have uh, three or four, counting this one. Okay, we have some left. And shout out to everybody uh, tuning in. We have our folks all the way from all over the U.S., uh, Hawaii, uh, U.K., Germany, Netherlands, Canada, Norway, France, Sweden, Maldives, Japan, Indonesia, Czech Republic, Switzerland, and Brazil. Wow. Nice. Mm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm.
We are descending our ROVs to explore Seamount 9. This 22-hour dive will be on the northern flank and summit of Seamount 9 with a maximum depth of, of 3,100 meters. So please send in your questions and check out our highlights from our previous dives. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned. Four dives, chat. Four dives. Live data is working. Let's go. Thank you, much appreciated. So chat, our live data is now working. Folks, you can also ask me questions on um, the Nautilus Live Instagram. Yes. I have created a poll. What is it called? Poll. A poll. A poll. <laughs> or yeah. questions? For questions. Question box? Yeah, submit What's your questions. Question box. Yes. Oh. So check out our poll. Instagram. Jules um, has her takeover today. Jules, you should also do a poll. I can also do a poll. What should I put in my poll? How about uh, Chana Cops versus oh, yeah. Sea Cucumber versus okay. Hotharian? Oh, that's a, that's a, hard that's a good one. one. <laughs> I think Chana Cops probably will win, but that big Sea Cucumber. Yeah, that big Sea oh, Cucumber boy. chat. You already know that was that was that was legendary. <laughs> okay. Other ideas. Welcome. I need an image of the Sea Cucumber. We oh, are there. Is there anything oh. we could? Oh, we could do like waypoints. <laughs> <laughs> waypoint two versus waypoint. Well, I was waypoint thinking it'd be kind of cool if there was a question we could pose to the viewers that will determine something we're doing during the dive. Oh, so at the end of this dive, we have a choice to make about which direction to go. Oh, cool. Oh, so if you go to the top of the question. hill, can we maybe oh. put uh, chat? Please, our yeah, viewers, put, uh, check out our Instagram. On. On okay, wait. Feed three. Hold on. For Joel's takeover, we are also currently at a 20 70 meters. Adam, do you want to zoom out more? No, that's good. I, I mean, I in. think if you can see it, 5A and 5B. Yeah, here, mm -hmm. I'll get in a little more. Oh, maybe zoom in on 5A, 5B yeah. so that, yeah. Okay. How's that? Good. Are you going to explain it? Uh, well, oh, okay. it's not it's not up on the feed, but Jules has taken oh, a picture okay. of it for her poll. Roger. Nice. So on stream three right now. Oh, okay, yeah. So cool. if, if folks are looking at at stream three, you can see the map that we're diving on and uh, the peak or the ridge of this this uh, seamount that we're on. And when we get up to waypoint four, which is kind of the top, we have to decide whether we're going west to 5B or east to 5A. And uh, whoever's on watch, we decide whoever's on watch at that time can decide, but maybe you can help decide for us. Uh, weather dependent, of course. <laughs> weather dependent. Please read all terms and conditions. <laughs> <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Yeah. <laughs> Employees of OET are not eligible. Yeah. <laughs> okay, zoom back out. Zoom out. Zoom, zoom. Adam, do you want to talk about this uh, kind of yeah, well series we of have features in general? Yeah. Yeah, so um, maybe zoom out a little more so we sure. can see the whole thing. All right, so you can see this volcanic ridge that runs east-west pretty much and you can see it doesn't have a flat top like a lot of the other seamounts we've been visiting so this one never reached the sea surface 
we're real interested in this one, both because of the depth, which is a depth we haven't spent a lot of time looking at uh, on this expedition, but also the steepness. So we'll be encountering some fairly steep slopes as we head up, and we're going to go over one of the that first lump between where we are and the and the top of the ridge, a little satellite cone on the on the flank of the seamount, and then up the lumpy and steep terrain to the top. So probably the primary volcanic vents were along the ridge, and maybe that little seamount or that little bump we're going over was maybe a another vent where lava was coming out of the sea floor, or maybe it's a big block of of the seamount that slid down the side. So we shall see. Great. Zoom back in. So, Samantha, what do you do with this screen and the ship and the waypoints? How's it all work? Yeah, so I am using this uh, software called HiPack to, um, one, to kind of keep track of where Hercules and Atalanta are in comparison to the ship, and also in comparison to our waypoints that are marked uh, with little crosses here. So the other thing that I'm looking at is um, there's a bathymetry map. So there's a map of kind of seafloor features here, but then overlaid is uh, with these black lines are 10 meter contours. So we can um, also use that to determine um, distances and also like like gradients of slopes um, as we're headed up and down these little knolls. Um, so I am using high pack to determine uh, the range and the bearing of the moves that we'll need the ship to make to keep Hercules and at Atlanta safely exploring on the sea floor. So right now we're just heading down to the sea floor where the ship's holding position and we're just dropping the vehicles down. But once we get there, we'll start making the ship moves and that's when you hear the nav calling into the bridge um, and giving a, uh, a range, so a distance um, and then a bearing and that's the direction we want the ship to move. The ship will maintain the same heading um, but we'll give a bearing so they'll move um, those could be similar, those could be different. Um, right now, for instance, our, our heading is about 80 degrees, so we're pointed to the, um, the northeast, uh, just a little northeast, um, almost full east. Uh, but for our bearing, we'll probably start moving, actually backing the ship down, so we'll actually back down on the reciprocal about 260 degrees and we'll just back down to our different waypoints um and mike do we generally go uphill or downhill does it matter what's the difference are you asking mike that question <laughs> yeah sure yeah. ask our navigator nope. that question bring it <laughs> in no i mean in terms <laughs> of moving, moving yeah. the vehicles around so uh typically we are heading uphill uh from our deepest step up to shallower uh, however, following some of the contours, we do end up going downhill on some shallower uh, areas. Uh, but our general direction is going from deep to shallow. And how does that change the orientation of the vehicles? Uh, it depends upon where uh, Hercules is in relation to Atalanta. Uh, some of the some of the really awesome shots that we can get of Hercules uh, doing its thing from Atalanta's <laughs> viewpoint uh, is when Atalanta can be hanging off the. Uh, into deeper water and let Hercules get closer to a wall. So that's one of the benefits of working from a deeper dive to a shallower dive. Uh, otherwise, if a uh, Herc is descending down, uh, then it's usually a lot further down below Atalanta and we usually want to get like a top-down view of Herc as we're doing that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Great job. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Let's go. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Follow-up questions? <laughs> oh, um, can we get an ETA? Possibly. That's Chat what everyone really wants to know. Yeah. They're like, when will this be over? <laughs> when are Chat's we there? wondering. Yeah. H12 is wondering, too. Uh, 26 minutes, which means we will be handing over to uh, our mm -hmm. fine 
colleagues in the 12 to 4 in just a few minutes. Awesome. Possum. Awesome. There's one of them Thanks. now. Bobby <laughs> Argus. Argus. Bobby Argus. Oh. <laughs> oh, and then we have a question for um, Robert. Hello, Robert Waters. What exciting items did you find on your shipwreck mission? On which shipwreck mission? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say generally. Okay. Shipwreck uh, seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been to quite a few shipwrecks. I found one once. Okay, let's start with that story. Yeah. We were we were looking for a science mooring and trying to find the, the anchor point on the bottom. It was it was supposed to be like a hundred meters up. We were looking for the anchor point. And they came across a chain that was obviously not the chain for the the science mooring. And we followed the chain to the end and found a pile of ballast stones and wine bottles. Huh. And such. Hmm. Yeah. Was this with Cindy? Yeah. Off of I think it was North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the boat? Uh I don't think they identified what it was. It wasn't a lot of how left the of it. The ship had pretty much disappeared. How old were the wine bottles? How'd the wine taste? <laughs> <laughs> I did bring a wine bottle back. Oh, okay. Was it uh, empty or it full? Was, I think it was just full of sediment. <laughs> okay. It, Wild it, it had been there a while. I don't really know the details. I mean, that. like contemporary uh, 1800s, 1700s? Like 1700s. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then there was a wreck that I, I don't remember the name of the wreck, but that was down in the Gulf. We found a couple of ships that had been in a, in a uh, convoy, hmm. Spanish ships. Oh wow! And so there, I think there was three of them that had sunk in a storm hmm. in a line. So one had. Uh, Are these the Monterrey? Monterrey. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Monterrey. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was interesting because it still had a compass. Oh uh, wow! And the compass had the oil in it still, and was still working. Wow! And we recovered that compass, put it in a foam lined box, and we brought it aboard. Oh, you were telling that story the other day. Yeah, so didn't I realize it was those wrecks. I, apparently, that's in the lobby of the uh, uh, Maritime Archaeological Center. Huh? In I don't know where. Somewhere. That, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where things go after, you yeah. know? Uh, for folks on the ship, there's a poster of one of those wrecks in the hallway uh, oh, near ooh, the okay, laundry cool. room. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm getting close to needing to do laundry. Well, when your laundry gets stuck in there for four hours, you can look at the poster <laughs> in detail. <laughs> it's actually amazing. It's, it's a high-resolution photogrammetry um, image and you can see like fly trap anemones you can see plates <coughs> from the wreck you can see you can yeah. see a t-shirt that we thought was something <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah like <laughs> contemporary waste that landed yeah, on it that looked like something yeah treasure, ma treasure map yeah. yeah that was a pretty cool wreck we found a pile of uh, furs on one of the other boats that huh. was with the Monterey. I think the Monterey was like the the lead boat that yeah. had you know, it had all the the I don't know what you call the Spanish like Marines. Yeah. That had all the weapons protecting the, the convoy. The conquistadors? I don't know. Is that what you call them? I don't know. Anyway, they had the cannons and the muskets and stuff. Interesting. Here's our watch change. Oh. Shout out to Jules from chat. It's almost like you're right next to me. What? <laughs> what? Hey. <laughs> Who's that from? <clears throat> I had a question. Oh, you put it in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yabasa. Oh, I was like, why, Addy, why would you say that? <laughs> but now.
short. <laughs> yes, please send in your questions to this chat feed on our website, nautiluslive.org. For all of our folks um, tuning in, we are now on watch change. Um, thanks so much for sticking with us. Stay tuned. We're at about 2466 meters. Um, we are exploring, or we will be exploring, the deep northern flank and summit of Seamount 9. Um, estimated duration on, on the bottom is about 22 hours at a max depth of 3,100 meters. Um, thank you for uh, sticking with us as we explore together. Um, stay tuned. Also, our team uploaded amazing highlights on nautiluslive.org from our previous dives. We will be posting more highlights in the days uh, to come, so stay tuned and keep checking in. Thanks, chat. You folks are amazing. Uh, continue to send in your questions. We'll be happy to answer them for you.
I think the level wind hose just may have kind of popped off, so there was some oil underneath. He's just cleaning it up. All right, looks like uh, people are starting to get settled in. Is this everybody? Or are we still waiting on anybody? Looks like all the noodlers are here. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's our ETA, Nav? Uh, about 20 minutes. Oh, not bad. I think this will be the deepest we've gone so far. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do we expect to find? Hmm? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> at these depths, I I would assume not a lot. Um, we're kind of past that depth, that range of yeah. really high Sweet density spot. of at least bio. Maybe some cool rocks. I don't know. I, <laughs> I guess we'll find out. So as we're uh, getting back on the SPL, we can do our introductions. So my name is Daniel. I'm your SPL host for this watch. My name's Sarah. I'm the scientist for this watch. And my name is Dwight, and I am the watch leader, uh, marine geologist, geophysicist from University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography. 
I am Loopy. I am the data logger um, for this watch from Tuskegee University. Front row if you're ready. I am Sarah Surgent. I am the Atalanta pilot today. Uh, Michael Hannaford, Herc pilot today. Uh, Cheyenne Waters, navigator. Um, I want to say hi again to Kaylin and Ollie and also Milo, Daisy, and Annie. Aww. All right. Yeah. And I'm Amber, the video engineer. Woohoo! We are at about uh, 2,600 meters, so we're aiming to get to 3,100 still, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so this is, like Dwight said before, our <coughs> deepest dive. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. And our ETA is about 15 minutes. Or ETB, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Seems like we're almost there, and it's been taking about two hours or so since we started, right, to get down there, or a little less. Yeah, it's been it's been a hot minute. We started we well, our <laughs> um, launch was about ten o'clock, so yep, take some time to get yeah, down over, there. Yeah, over over two hours this time. Mm-hmm. What was our shallowest dive? How long did that take? I think we came up from 1,200 meters once, or 1,100. So that was less than an hour. That was like an hour. We we come up a little slower than we can descend. Maybe we'll get surprised and see lots of corals. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that would be amazing. <laughs> That'd be really cool to see. But we do, I, uh, we'll check in with Brian, hopefully, and I think maybe Steve is online with us, and we can um, decide which s corals to sample because because we're going so deep. Right, This right. will be the first uh, collections of mm -hmm. certain species at this depth range. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's what we want to go for. So are we going to the very bottom of the seamount, or is it still on the flank of one? No, not quite. Uh, it looks like the flat part is closer to mm, 3,500, 3,600. And uh, our ROV is rated to about 4,000 meters? Yeah. There's just not too much. It, at, that, at those depths, <laughs> it's really just mud. So we're not as interested in that as we are the rocky sides of the seamounts. Mm-hmm. Although it's hard to see, and because we didn't we didn't map it yet when we made our uh, dive plan, but we did map it early this morning. So I haven't had a chance to look to see how much deeper this seamount goes. Mm -hmm. But this seamount's definitely different from all the others we've dove on so far. It's uh, not a flat top guillot. Probably never was at sea level. It's like an elongated ridge that trends north south. I mean, uh, trends east to west, rather. And um, not sure about the origin. That's one of the things we're going to be studying. It's, uh, I'm sure, volcanic from a hot spot, but it, it didn't form an island. It, uh, it was maybe more of a continuous eruption over time that not as volume, not without the same amount of volume as a typical uh, oceanic island. And it could be a different age from the other seamount, the other guillots we've been diving on. This could be older, could be younger, we don't know. Um, but it does look quite a bit different structurally, so that kind of indicates it may not be the same age. On the last cruise, did we go to this depth in this area? Uh, they, did a, they did a dive on seamount seven. Uh, I can't remember the depth. That I think they did start this deep, though. Yep.
and I'm not sure they saw a whole lot, but this is a different feature. So as we're diving deeper into the ocean, we are going through uh, different zones that reflect the different levels of light that we received the farther down we go. So where we started was in the epipelagic zone, or the sunlight zone. This is, extends from the surface down about 200 meters below the ocean surface. And you find an abundance of aquatic life up there that take advantage of the sunlight, such as white uh, oceanic white-tipped sharks, which love to swim around our ship, flying fish, which are really neat to see, coming in and out of the water when we're out on deck. And at nighttime, we also see um, animals that take advantage of vertical migration. So we see many squids at night dancing around the ROVs. And so past 200 meters, and between there and 1,000 meters, we are in the mesopelagic zone. In that area, we consider it to be the twilight zone. And unlike the famous TV show from the 1960s, this zone is full of uh, less of the, what we find in the photo sunlit zone, but other creatures that take advantage of the light starting to dim down. So we find many siphonophores, tinnivores, and jellies that float in this area of the ocean. And past 1,000 meters, and between there and 4,000 meters, we are in the bathypelagic zone, which is the zone that we are looking to be in on this dive. And this is also known as the midnight zone. Down at this level, we pretty much have near zero uh, light down there. So most of what we see in terms of light comes from bioluminescence, which is very common in the deep ocean. Look at, there's an ube cookie place next to the oh, bubble tea place near yeah. the ship. Oh my gosh, you're kidding. It's $2. Correct. Yeah, but you gotta eat 12 <laughs> of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Folks. <laughs> Suggestions. <sighs> I kind of like just a plain musubi, you know, just oh, salted rice nothing fancy. for the beach. Mm. Beach. That what do you got beach. against spam? No, you don't got to get spam. No, what do you have against spam? Oh, what do I have <laughs> against spam? <laughs> yeah. I just meat yeah. in a can, generally speaking. Yeah. Whether it's no, Vienna it's sausages or this isn't spam. The same. Delicious. I'm mostly oh, vegetarian, really but I still, have this, I still have spam most of <laughs> Fried crispy. Yep. Oh, yeah. So good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For a cake. So Hawaii, Hawaii has uh, the largest per capita consumption of spam in the United States. <laughs> Yeah. The yep. second largest That's a beautiful state thing. for consumption of spam is Alaska. Hmm. So these are, are these are all like wartime traditions. That yeah, have true. Done. So Dave, true, as a person living in Alaska many years, what what are the top spam recipes? Alaskan spam. Um, I got first of all, there's a, the a lot of folks from the islands uh, mm -hmm. that live That's in true. Alaska. Yeah. Uh, and so those traditions have transferred over. So musubi is available. Yes. You can walk into the quick stop and 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 Amazing. buy musubi. Yeah, it is. It's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, fried crispy, uh, spam burgers, where oh you slice goodness. where oh, you slice it uh, the long way out oh. of the can so that it's square, and style. then fry that crispy in, uh, oh, okay. and on a, on a bun. Oh my gosh. Uh, spam burgers. We yeah. could be my, doing that out here. My kids grew up with that kind of yeah. stuff because. We always had spam. Okay. I've driven Jules out of the van now with the <laughs> taco. <laughs> she's, uh, she's left. She like, can't take it any longer. You want this? I miss the 7-Eleven uh, iced coffee. Oh, there the you go. The Java iced coffee. Oh. <sighs> Slow it up. Ooh. So we're going to have that phenomenon. Phenomena. Slow down. Rather. This is the deepest we've gone, so I suspect it's going to be worse. Really? Is
is there a reason why ube mochi pancakes are purple or is that the color purple, purple sweet potato yeah mm -hmm. it's the color of the potato nice the yam some sweet potato fries would be oh yeah spot oh, yeah, yeah. yep yep For everyone who's Marissa. just uh, tuning in, um, stay tuned. We are currently descending to explore the deep northern flank and summit of Seamount 9. Our expected dive duration on the bottom will be about 22 hours uh, at a max depth of 3,100. Um, I, I believe we'll reach the bottom in about tentatively 70 minutes. 70 or 70? 70. 70, uh, I think that's right. Mas. Mas. <laughs> Poquito mas. <laughs> Mucho mas. Stay tuned, folks, as we explore. We're excited to explore Seamount 9. So, how are these numbers assigned? Like, this is the, num oh, the Seamount oh. number sure. 9. They are, they reflect the tentative order of dives that we were planning on before we came out here. Ah, so cool. these are not official names. They are just out of convenience for us to say we are going to go to this one first, and this one second, and this one third, and et cetera, et cetera. Nice. If you were to name your own seamount, what would you call it? Mm, I'd probably name it after my kids, probably. Oh, OK. There's a seamount in the Papahana Mokwakea, which is name is Pau Pau. And my family calls me Pau. Oh. Just like a short, so I love that. Pau Pau. Yeah. Pau Pau. Let's go chat. What would you name your seamount? Or Gio? So, let's see, let's see. Um. I can tell you guys that last night when I was describing rocks, um, I found the least altered basalt that we've encountered so far it had fresh olivine, pyroxene, what? and plagioclase feldspar phenocrysts. Really? That's so exciting. Yeah. yeah. Just scatter it through or? Yeah, yeah. They're just okay. like little floaty bits. Yeah, yeah. There. Amazing. And it, and it was not an angular cantaloupe. It was mm. round. Huh. A round a loop. A round <laughs> Just straight melon. Just straight melon. All the way down. I think I would be olivine if I was a rock. Oh, yeah. You ready to speed up? Okay, come on up. Yeah, we don't ask. Not very what much. What yeah, mineral got a would 17. you be? Yeah, we'll try it. Okay. So Jules, how's your Instagram takeover going? 17. It's going great. 
Um, Are you typically on Instagram? I am on Instagram, <laughs> personally. Or Insta, as Insta. I say. <laughs> yeah, we say Insta now, <laughs> as the cool people say. Um, I do have a quick correction. I said atmospheric pressure, but pressure underwater is hydrostatic oh, pressure. So, just a quick note. When did you say that? Um, you would know if you watched my story. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, on your Instagram. <laughs> it's on the Nautilus Live Instagram. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Corley just informed me. Underwater, it's hydrostatic pressure. Air is um, atmospheric pressure. It can be expressed in terms of atmospheres. Yeah, yeah, the units pressure. are the same. Do you need to take the ship? But it's called to get something to different. No? I mean, not really. Not even kinda. Well, science. <laughs> were these very specific waypoints, or were these guidelines? Guidelines. Great. Not really great, but okay. Why not? I have to keep driving ahead, and that's detracting from our ability to go down. Okay. Well, we can move the ship if you'd like, but we are not going forward. Oh. We'll be backtracking that for. That's worse. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, we'll be backing down to All get right. to our sites. doing that weirdness with the pressure. Oh, with the pressure See in the upper left? Yeah. yeah. Like in the upper left? Yep. Like if I give it a, just a little bit, it goes way Oh, uh, it drops. It, yeah. yeah. And it gets hung up in that mode. And then, yeah. So our descent speed changes radically. If you just didn't want to give them next watch more time on the bottom, that's I understand that too. Well, here we are. <laughs> face to face, a couple of silver spoons. Let's see, what else can we talk about? <laughs> Slow morning here. Yeah, what have we got, Annie? Forward. Any good questions oh, I think the chat? I, I, Sorry. Go to starboard. Can you hear me? Sorry, I'm trying to log into how many dives oh, oh I have a I have a ROV question. Ooh. Robert. Yeah. Can you tell us about the time that you totally rebuilt the electronic motor controllers? I just heard that story the other day and it was super impressive. The motor controllers? Oh. You, know, you bought yeah, the new oh. ones and they didn't work and then you so you like kinda went oh, to the yeah, trash. We had some we had some fail. Yeah, so it, it, what was going on is they had, actually the manufacturer had uh, spec'd some diodes at a lower voltage than they should have. Yeah. And so uh, I replaced all the diodes, but because of that, we had blown up some parts on some of the controller boards. And they were gonna take forever to get new ones, and yeah. I re repaired the boards we had. Yeah, like took out little components and put in new ones. It's still, yeah. it's, the reason I found out about this is because I went in the shop and I was like, why do you guys have a better microscope than we have in the lab? 
<laughs> and yeah. Cause that, cause so, yeah, Bob got tired surface. of looking at these tiny components. <laughs> I'm I'm old and I, my eyes are not that great, but once you get used to working under a microscope on surface mount stuff, it's like pretty tough to oh not have one. Yeah. Yeah. So what? There was no schematic for them, you know. It used to be back in the old days, you'd buy a piece of gear and it would come with the schematic drawings. Yeah. So you had a, you know, you had a clue on how to fix it. But nothing comes that way now, right? Everything's, you know, if it doesn't work, you, you turn to the manufacturer. Well, and they're not very helpful in, in uh, providing information to fix stuff your own. But, you know, when we're out here, we got to improvise you don't have spare parts sometimes yeah no it's true and I guess one of the things I've seen over the years is you know some small company develops a new tool or a component and they know everything about it and then that company gets sold to a bigger company and then they all the kind of information about how it was originally designed and why the choices were made as it kind of yeah, disappears. Yeah, it goes away. Component level troubleshooting and repair, like Bob was just describing, is almost a lost art yeah. at this point. Oh. Especially with surface mount stuff. I, I gave up repairing boards when uh, surface mount uh, components came out. It's just like yeah, and you know, the move is to smaller and smaller parts. Yeah. So, like, you know, they they go into like what they call ball grid arrays, where the yeah the the leads are just little solder balls underneath the part, so there can be, and they're spaced like a half a millimeter, so they're pretty pretty tightly spaced.